when your barber is telling you about the investment, that's when the bubble is about to burst. I was just speaking to a few 20 something year old guys, um, friends of one of my sons recently, and they're telling me, what Bitcoin is going up and up. I can prove it because everyone I know is buying it. I said, that's the <laughs> proof or indication that it's going to crash because once they've all bought it, then who else is left to buy it to prop it up? Without further ado, going to tonight's special guest, a dear friend, Dr. Rich Roberts. He is a medical doctor, doctor of biophysics, and former pharmaceutical industry CEO for a quarter century, URL Pharma. We've had a number of conversations with him in the past. and We spoke about management, regulation, corporate culture. Tonight's show is all about investing, investments. Um, that, by the way, just a public note, and uh, that's just an important disclaimer, as Dr. Roberts mentioned to me that needs to be stressed, and it's true, is that even though he's going to be sharing all types of great advice and tips and tricks on how to be successful, always contact your local advisor. He's not taking responsibility for, for this. However, he certainly has a great track record, but nonetheless, always contact your local financial advisor. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you said it correctly. I'm not a, fun, a licensed financial advisor. I'm not giving you advice. I'm just expressing my opinion. But Yitzhak, I'm sorry. I have yeah. to correct you on one thing. I'm ready. I'm ready. You, you said that I was a pharmaceutical industry president and CEO for a quarter century. That's not true. It was only 24 and a half years. Don't make me seem older than I am. <laughs> You're also brutally honest. So if I say, I, did I, I think I said nearly a quarter century. So then I would okay, be correct. Yeah, maybe if I did. said nearly, but you know what? Hey, listen, someone could rewind this. And if I said for a quarter century, I stand corrected. Yeah, we're six months shy of that. All right. <laughs> oh, when you say painfully honest, can I just plug my new video? Yeah, for sure. And your channel. Thank you. There's I have a, I have a uh, YouTube channel. If you want to search it, it's um, Dr. Richard Roberts, Lakewood, New Jersey. You have to put in the Lakewood, New Jersey, because there's a Dr. Richard Roberts, who is a doctor of theology, and he runs the Oral Roberts um, Evangelical Empire. Which is not and you. Not I'm you. not him. I'm the little Jew in Lakewood. I'm not him. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so he said, be honesty, honesty. Right? So Netflix came out recently with a new series called My Unorthodox Life. I suggest to everyone that they do not watch it. It is highly prejudicial and it is factually incorrect. And I have a video coming out soon, hopefully in the next day or so, um, tonight if I can get it done, uh, refuting just the factual misrepresentations of Orthodox Judaism that are just um, slandered and and thrown onto us in this in this series. So please look out for that. Thank you, and thank you for uh, stepping up to the plate and in, 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 in correcting that uh, terrible that that terrible uh, you know, position, outlook, and, and, and presentation. It's really thank you. Um, okay, tonight's show is all about investing, and we're going to be talking about the the. Um, the world of investing prior to cryptocurrency, and we're going to talk about cryptocurrency as well. So in the first segment of tonight's show, Dr. Roberts, perhaps you can give a lay of the land about the, there, there, are, there are people out there that, of course, are very familiar and are in the market, and then there are many people that have not dabbled yet. They know that there's, uh, there's something called a NASDAQ, there's an index, there's also an app called Stash, there's, and there are company, major companies... Perhaps you can make sense of it all in a kind of in a succinct way in the, in the next five, 10 minutes to explain just the a primer, investing 101 in 2021. Okay, great. There is something which I call the gambling mentality. If you speak to someone who's a gambler, uh, he'll he'll always tell you about his winnings. He won at the you know the casino this much, and he won at the casino that much, and he won at the blackjack blackjack table this much. And he's making all this money gambling, and for some reason he's broke and can't pay his mortgage. Um, this is what you'll see in the stock market all the time. 
first of all, there are millions and millions of people investing in the stock market. So are there going to be some people who are outliers, some person who hits it big on this one stock or whatever? Sure, of course. It's just the random luck of the draw. But the fact is, for almost every single person, uh, the, you, trying to, there's, there's, a, there's a way to invest that's really investing. And, and I'll tell you what you're going to be investing in. And there's gambling. And, and so you just got to, when you hear all these stories, this guy, he bought, you know, if I would have only bought Apple stock back when it was 10, I would, I would now have, you know, $50 million. Well, if I bought uh, Coca-Cola stock back in 1918, whatever it was when it first came out, I'd be worth a billion dollars. Uh, you know, excuse me, that's, you know, if I would have uh, you know, gone to the casino and known the numbers to pick, I would have won. That is totally illegitimate gambling, which, by the way, from a religious perspective, we're not supposed to gamble. But and I'm not making any religious you know, decisions about what stock market trading is. So here's what investing is in, in the stock market. No one knows what's going to happen. They flat out don't know. There's a huge industry called the financial press which is not really that much different than the regular news press where they, where they just really don't know what's, go what's going to happen. You'll have experts on and almost almost always the experts going to tell you that what's going to happen is what just happened. Uh, it is rare that anyone can actually tell you what happened, what, what's going to happen next year. And if you look at the majority of, um, if you look at the, the, the experts who are paid like in mutual funds to pick individual stocks pick this one, pick that one, and you have to pay fees for this. You have to pay money for this. Every year, 90% of them do not beat the index fund. Now, what is an index fund? Right. <clears throat> You've heard of the market went up, the market went down. Generally, what they're talking about is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, you're going to be shocked what that is. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is the 30 largest and most successful companies in the United States. How's it, how do you determine who's in it or not? The, the newspaper, the Wall Street Journal, their editors decide who's in it or not. That's what the Wall Street, that's what the down just industrial average is. Generally, when that goes up or that goes down, people say the market is up, the market is down. That's only 30 stocks. There are thousands upon thousands of stocks, not just in the um, not just in the New York Stock Exchange, but New York Stock Exchange, but the NASDAQ, and then there's all kinds of other exchanges all around you know, the world. The, the best way to invest and the real way to invest is uh, invest for the long term. And if you say, and it's actually more of a, so it's more of a geopolitical decision. So what you're saying is if you're buying the Dow, which is the top 30 stocks in the country, or you're buying the S&P 500, that's the top 500, uh, five, the top 500 uh, stocks or companies in the country or any these other indexes, I'm gonna tell you what the indexes are. You're really saying that I believe that the United States of America, the American people with their work ethic, with their constitution and their laws, as opposed to corruption, with their being a free democratic country as opposed to one that could end up seizing the asset that I invested in, in some other country. Um, you're, you're, you're in the creativity because of the the capitalistic reward system that we have, where if somebody makes something new and it's great and it helps everybody, that person makes a lot of money. So there's an incentive for people to put themselves out, work harder, create things. If you believe that the United States of America is where the future of the world is, then that is what you want to invest in, is the United States of America. So, and I'm going to tell you how to do that with index funds on American stocks. Now, if you think China is the future of the world, which you might think, um, then you could buy Chinese index funds. If you think Europe's going to be it, or think uh, emerging markets in you know in, in the uh, Asian areas or or Africa are going to be it, you can then buy those index funds. So now, but that's how you that's how you win in the stock market. You buy index funds and you buy them regularly, which we're going to talk about. Now, what is an index fund? Mm -hmm. There are thirty stocks in the Dow Industrial Average. If you're going to every time you you do a transaction every time you buy a stock you have to pay a fee even the companies that don't charge you fees it turns out that they're making money on you because of how they're routing your data and routing your buy and someone else gets to buy a little little sliver ahead of you and that's how those people make their money 
But um, if you're going to buy each of the stocks in the Dow, you're going to buy all 30 companies, you're going to have to do 30 stock trades. Well, that's going to be 30 fees that you need to pay. And that's going to be 30 stocks that you need to track and keep, keep attention to. Fortunately, there's something called an index fund. Uh, I think Vanguard might have been the one that created this. The, the guy who had been there previously is one of the, the giants in investing. And what it is, is it's just one stock. And when you buy it, they automatically take all those millions and millions of dollars coming in from people every day to that one stock. And they use that millions and millions of dollars. And then they buy with those millions of dollars, they buy all the stocks in that Dow. So of all the millions of dollars that come into that index fund, just is, we don't have a bunch of, of, of analysts that are being paid who actually don't really generally statistically do anything more than run up the fees on you. Um, I just have a guy with a computer. And as the millions of dollars comes in, instead of each person having to buy each of the 30 stocks and all those millions of people having to do, pay all those fees, they just bang, hit the computer, the money gets distributed buying millions of dollars of each of the 30 stocks all at once. So by you can have one share of stock, it might be worth, cost $100, whatever, you know, the, I'll tell you what the index fund symbol is for this. Um, you buy one share, and you now own a piece of the 30 largest companies in the United States. Now there are different companies that will, different stock investing companies that will provide you index funds for the Dow. I think the most common or famous one is called Diamonds, D-I-A. If you go on the stock ticker and you look up D-I-A, that is the stock that, uh, that is the index fund that if you buy one share, or you buy 10 shares, you buy a million shares, you're buying uh, okay, all the all the 30 of the top companies in the country in one transaction, paying only one fee. Now the S&P 500 is now the top 500 companies in the United States. And that is called Spiders, but it's S-P-Y. Um, and if you buy a share of Spider, you only do one transaction, buying one share of S-P-Y, and that share automatically buys a piece of all 500 companies. So um, this is really the best way to invest in the market. If you believe America is the future, uh, and I've got to tell you, I mean, the geopolitical uh, stability um, uh, is very important. The, uh, the attendance to law, to, to the rule of law versus massive corruption that, that's seen throughout a lot of the third world. Not to say we don't ever have corruption here, but we certainly have government agencies that are after them. Um, you have to try to weed out corruption and there are criminal consequences for that. So when, when you buy, so when you, when you buy that index fund in America, you're buying the American political system for the future. My guest is Dr. Richard Roberts. Uh, he was a pharmaceutical industry CEO, not for a quarter century, but close, 24 and a half years. That is definitely enough to make an impact. In a previous show that we've had, I believe it's on YouTube, he discussed the story, the amazing story, and how to come back from the brink and how to be staring, as they say, staring over the cliff and yet, not falling off of it. Um, tonight's show is all about invest investing. And the first part of the show, we kind of went through the basics, investing 101 in 2021. Great. Now we're starting to dive right in. We're going to talk about diversification, how to hold on. I mean, we know Warren Buffett has the Misu Shalach principle. He actually calls it that. He uh, Warren Buffett, the Misu Shalach principle. Dr. Roberts is going to explain that. You got to stick it out. You know, this is not this is not gambling. You got to stick it out. Dr. Roberts, thank you for joining me here on Mind Your Business. The floor is yours. Diversification and all these other areas, giving real tips and advice. And I want to remind the listeners, sorry, before you jump in, always consult your local professional, your local tax advisor, financial professional, anyone who you turn to for guidance and in investing, Definitely turn to them before you take on any type of risk. That said, Dr. Roberts has a great track record, and he's here to share his uh, his advice and perspective with us. Okay, thank you. So, by the way, I want, I want to mention that the technology stocks are generally concentrated in the NASDAQ. 
uh, NASDAQ stock market and the index fund, most popular one for the NASDAQ, the symbol is QQQ. That's three Qs. You'll see it and that's a NASDAQ index fund. You buy that and you one share and you're buying a piece of Apple and Microsoft and, and you know, and Intel and on and on and on. So, uh, and I also as Yitzhak had said, I'm also not an investment advisor. I'm just giving you my understanding, my opinions. I'll tell you what, something else, by the way, when COVID hit, and the stock, the stock market was down about, about 40%, 40, 45%. I told people on my YouTube channel to buy and to buy the index fund uh, and just hold on to it no matter what. And what happened? They're up over 100% now. Now, I didn't know people bought, you know, I didn't know if anybody followed my advice, but I have all these people now in my community coming up to me. Thank you so much. I did what you said and, and I'm over up over 100%. Now, what that proves about me and about my capability is nothing. It proves nothing. The fact that I that I happened to feel that there was a good time to buy because even though the market had dropped, you know, 40, 45 percent, I still thought America was not down, was not gone and America was going to come back. And I thought it was a smart thing to do. But that doesn't mean that I can't get things wrong also. So when somebody tries to tell you, I know everything, they don't. And by the way, we see these experts on, you know, on, you know, on the uh, whatever it's the video and on the media telling you, you know, what they're, what you need to do and what to buy and to buy this one. And um, if they know what to buy, if they know how to make so much money, why do they need, to, why do they need to try to sign you up as a client? Uh, you just think about that. You just yeah. <laughs> think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so but I am not an invest, investment expert or certified. These are just my opinions. So now, right, um, I want to talk to you about dollar about um, a diversif diversification yeah. first, yeah. which is about the stock market and is about your life. <clears throat> there is something called a concentration risk. If you have too many of your eggs in one basket and that one basket breaks, you're wiped out. That's a concentration risk. If you're running a company and you know 90% of your sales come from one customer, then that customer, if they decide to drop you, you're gone. If you're running a company and 90% of your products come from one factory, and that factory is a fire or whatever, you're gone. These are called concentration risks. And you can see it in other areas of your life. You think about it. If you have too much sitting in one concentrated area. As a matter of fact, um, one of the reasons why we had to sell our business is because we had so much value sitting just in the business. Probably 99% of what I owned or more was in my stock holding in the business. Um, also for the employees, only employees had stock options. I mean, if something could go wrong, which I hope they, I hope it wouldn't, uh, but if it ever went wrong, then they wouldn't get all the money that they ended up getting from, you know, from being able to, to sell the company and they got all, lots of money for the stock options. So this is what's called a concentration risk. A great example of it was Enron. It's a, it was a huge multi, I don't know, multi hundred billion dollar business doing oil trading, and they had thousands of employees. The employees had their salaries from Enron, they worked for Enron, and they had their retirement funds, the 401k in Enron stock. And then when fraud was discovered and Enron crashed, they both lost their jobs and they lost any value in their retirement funds. Mm -hmm. So if you if you you need to have diversification risk and you have to, you have to diversify uh, to, to avoid risk. As a matter of fact, what some of the super most wealthy people do, like a Jeff Bezos and other people like that who are worth, you know, 100, 150 billion dollars. I mean, Jeff Bezos is most, almost all of his money is sitting just in Amazon stock. So what, what the big investment houses will do, they'll allow you to draw up contracts to say somebody has a, let's say somebody has a gazillion dollars and they're in Ford Motor Company. I'm just mm -hmm. making this up. Mm -hmm. Then they'll, they'll draw contracts. You can actually agree to exchange, you know, the rights to each other's stock, even though you don't actually sell the stock yet. So you don't actually have to pay capital gains tax. But everybody who has big money knows you must diversify your risk. When you buy an index fund, you're not deciding, oh, I love this one company. I think it's going to go up. And then Oops, something bad happens, it goes down. You're spreading your risk out across a lot of companies. Now, if that one company you think you would have picked, right, the gambler's mentality, oh, I would have picked that number and, and, and it would have hit. Um, you can't do it. But if you, if you have that mentality, you think you would have picked what number you're gonna hit, it's, it's a fallacy. By picking a, by, so if you pick one and it hits, yeah, you'll make more 
than having diversified across all these companies. But if it goes down, you can get wiped out. Whereas if you cross 30 companies, it's highly unlikely unless the United States of America goes out of business, in which case, what do you care? Your money's not worth anything anyway. <laughs> so that's, we're talking about a diversification uh, so that you um, so right. that you avoid concentration risk. Now, now oh, yeah. Can I, yeah, can I tell about one yeah, more thing here? Please, please. Okay. When do you buy? Right. You should buy low and sell high. The trouble is you never know what the bottom is and you never know what the top is. You just can't know, period. Anyone who tells you they know, they don't know. Um, I'll give you an example. I was talking to my Goldman, my, some Goldman Sachs advisors uh, at the beginning of this year. And I said, I was just too concerned in the stock market, very concerned in the stock market about, um, you know, about another COVID wave coming with a variant that maybe would just avoid the vaccines totally. And they said, with all the liquidity, all the money being printed by the government, being handed out, they think the market's going to go up. They were right. I was wrong. Okay. So when do you buy? The stock market now is at, is at an all-time high. When I see, you have to think about these things conceptually. Oh, it's 1% off the all-time high. That's the all-time high. It's 3% off the all-time high. That's the all-time high. You're supposed to buy low and sell high. Here's what most people do. They buy high, they sell low, and then the wealthy people scoop up those stocks and make money when it goes up again. <laughs> the way to buy stocks requires the following discipline and the following psychological or orientation. It's called a dollar cost averaging. What it means is you decide that you're going to buy that index, let's see, diamonds, DIA, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you're going to buy $100 a week. If the stock market is high, you're buying. Stock market is down a bit, you're buying. The stock market crashes, you're buying. You don't look at the news. You don't you don't look at the news. I mean, unless nuclear weapons, unless it's like a nuclear war exchange, you know, with our adversaries, you know, that, then the money isn't worth anything anyway. So what do you care? It probably won't be alive anyway. But um, you don't look at the news. You buy every week. Or if you don't feel like doing it every week, do it every month. Um, you buy, you know, $400 a month, $200 a month, $3,000 a month. You just buy and buy and buy, and you don't worry about it. When the, uh, the stock market is down, oh, it's the end. They're never going to come back. The uh, China is now in the lead and America's done. You know, okay, buy. When this market is going up, buy. When it's high, buy. When it's down, buy. But here's the key. You only invest money that you're not gonna need in, in any time in the near future. People say five years, 10 years, two years, but if you, you, know, you have to have your rainy day fund that's not sitting in stocks in case you're gonna need that. Because the last thing you wanna do is, heaven forbid, there's a massive recession, uh, the economy goes down, you lose your job, the stock market is down, and now you have to sell your stocks at a loss. So you need to only invest money that you really are not going to need to need to touch for two years, five years, 10 years. If you look at the market over any 10 or 20 year period, you'll, you're going to see not this, not going to see it going up. You're going to see. Right. Yeah, it's, the average is going up, no. but it's having these swings in the meantime. You're buying on the upswing. You're buying in the middle of the downswing. You're buying in the bottom of the downswing. You're buying in the middle of the upswing. You're buying at the upswing, and you're buying, and the whole, and it's going up. The economy is growing. Uh, technology is improving. Efficiency is improving. Um, the people's standards of living are improving, and you, you know you, 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 buy, you have to buy along the way. But you have to have this is critical. You have to have a commitment, a psychological commitment that I'm not going to sell when the stock market is down. I'm gonna buy like, like, a, like a horse with blinders on and you can't see anything. And you just keep doing this. And look, I can't guarantee anything, but if you look, go, just go on the, go, you know, look up a graph of the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, um, you know, yeah. returns or stock market price over the last 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years. And you'll see, then zoom in to over the last uh, five years and the last four, three, two years. And then you're gonna see all this volatility up and down. But you look over 20 years, up, 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 up. So that's, but you have to have that discipline 
don't let the wealthy people buy your stock when it's down because you're listening to everybody around you panicking. Dr. Roberts, when we come back, I want to talk about the latest craze, if you will, and that is cryptocurrency. There's been so much talked about. Bitcoin is, of course, the, I don't know if that's the actual biggest one or certainly one of the biggest ones out there. Um, so, yeah. Well, right after the break, for those listening, yes, tonight's show will become a popular YouTube uh, video. Um, if you want to be notified, you could set that up automatically. All you have to do is go to YouTube, go to our channel, 710WOR, Mind Your Business, and click on subscribe. And, I mean, there's over, there's many hundreds of videos already up there. And they videos I've had with uh, from interviews with Beth Comstock and many other uh, great industry leaders. Um, and when you subscribe, you automatically get notified every single time a, um, a, a an episode goes live. Uh, actually, Dr. Roberts, you have a popular YouTube channel. What is it? How could people find out and watch the, all the material that you put up regularly? They would have to search uh, Dr. Richard Roberts, Lakewood, New Jersey. As I said earlier, definitely add Lakewood, New Jersey into the search. <laughs> and I have, but in my yeah. YouTube channel, I do a wide variety of things. I, as a medical doctor, I did a, and a doctor of biophysics. I've done a lot of, on COVID during the crisis. Yeah. Yeah. I've done some on Bitcoin and financial investing. Had one recently explaining all of science, me, uh, meaning um, uh, elementary particle physics, quantum mechanics, special relativity, general relativity, and then talking about the UFO with the with the Pentagon the UFO <laughs> issue. So, and I'm about to come out with this one now, uh, trying to defend our, us against the slander in this Netflix video. Yeah, thank so you. it's a wide variety of topics. Um, we're speaking with Dr. Richard Roberts, yeah. medical doctor, doctor of biophysics, and former pharmaceutical industry CEO for nearly 25 years. It was 24 and a half to be exact. Uh, we have a, um, there is an F a YouTube show. Actually, I mean, it was a, uh, a show that we had here on the radio where Dr. Roberts really discussed that incredible journey. Um, and there's many, many learning experiences from that. But tonight we're talking about investment. And before the break, we teased the, um, the listening audience that we are going to talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and that whole universe. Uh, perhaps, Dr. Roberts, you can make sense of it all. Okay, I'll try. <clears throat> I want to just add something to our previous discussion. Sure. And something that I, I learned when, you know, when we got investors in our company who are part of the uh, <clears throat> who are part of the billionaire class of investors. Uh, I this is the first time I ever got to rub elbows with billionaires and work with them. And one thing they had taught me, they all taught me the same thing, which is take money off the table. So after I just told you, buy, buy consistently, buy without looking and don't sell in a panic. I do want to say that if there is a precipitous drop in the market, a, that doesn't make any sense. That's not a 5% drop. It's the World Trade Centers, you know, get hit. And all of a sudden the market drops, whatever the number is, 50%. But nothing fundamentally changed in American industry, the ability to function economically, uh, COVID hits. Yeah, we're in trouble for a, for a year, but it didn't destroy the fabric of America. And, you know, the the, uh, the housing crisis hits. Uh, yes, we know that the Federal Reserve is going to come in with extra cash. They're going to make sure America doesn't die. Uh, when you see these crazy, uh, they, call it, they call it a market dislocation, uh, kind of like a joint get dislocated. It's no longer continuous. It's popped out all of, a, all of a sudden, you could buy extra after, after you see a crash like that. <clears throat> but I also want to tell you what these billionaires told me, that, but this, that was my observation. Now, what they told me was, if you have something you bought and it's just going up and up and up like crazy, take some money off the table. So for those of you who are not going to buy index funds and are going to buy an individual stock, maybe like if you had bought Bitcoin, and let's say you bought Bitcoin at $5 a coin and it's now up to $1,000 a coin. Maybe you should sell some. Now you say, wait, went up to 65,000. Yeah, but when it was 1,000, you didn't know that. And you really just, you really truly didn't know that. So maybe you sold 20% of it at 1,000 and you took whatever money you invested off the table and you made some profit and you have 80% 80 riding. Maybe it went up to 5,000 and you sold another 20%. You're going to say, wait, no, but it went up to 64,000. 
When it was at 5,000, you didn't know that. Um, and similarly, when it was up at 64,000, you might have taken another 20% off the table. Well, what happened? It crashed down to 30,000. So um, you, you take some off the table. And as, as a friend of mine said, he said, Rich, no one ever went broke taking a profit. So just protect yourselves that way. And in my opinion, <clears throat> no liability for me, just giving you some advice. Now, Bitcoin, what is money? And I'll tell you what money is. <clears throat> you take a dollar bill, you can't eat it. I mean, you could if you're crazy, but you're not going to get any nutrition from it. You can't digest cellulose. Um, you, you can't eat it. You can't put it in your gas tank. Uh, you can't build your house with it. I mean, in reality, you know. Um, so what is it worth? A dollar is worth, money is worth the goods and services that it can buy. If a dollar can buy a pound of butter and some African currency dollar, you need a million dollars to buy a pound of butter, then our one dollar and their million dollars or lira or whatever are worth the same because they can each buy a pound of butter. So what is Bitcoin worth? Anything is worth what other people are willing to pay for it. But the problem with Bitcoin is uh, it doesn't have an entire national economy behind it the way the United States dollar does. It has actually only the guy who's the more who's the last sucker to buy it before it crashes, if it crashes, that's what it was worth until it crashes. It's really straight out gambling because you just don't know what's going to happen to it. Now, <clears throat> there are three uses for Bitcoin. That was three. Um, one is if you're in the market for like, um, I guess, a rocket propelled grenade or some fentanyl or you want to you know, hire an assassin, which personally, I'm, I'm not in the market for those things. <laughs> but yeah, 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 that's what people can use Bitcoin for. The other thing that people can use Bitcoin for is for tax evasion. You know, if, uh, if Bitcoin, they buy it and if it goes up high and they sell it, well, they sh legally should declare it on their taxes, but there's no way of tracing that. So maybe the people are using it for tax evasion. Again, that's not me. I follow the law. I follow it beyond the letter of the law. I pay an enormous amount of taxes. And in my opinion, if you're paying a lot of taxes, it's good news because you're making money. There's an easy way to not pay any taxes. Right. Don't make any money. So um, I'm not against paying taxes. And I love this country and I support this country. That's And I'm grateful to this country. The third use of Bitcoin is as an invest is as an investment vehicle, which is I'm buying Bitcoin so I can sell the Bitcoin if and when it goes up. Unfortunately, it might go might not go up, it might go down, and you don't know where it's going to go. Now, there's something in investing called a bubble. That's where the value of something just goes up and up and up irrationally, unjustifiably, and typically in in bubbles, they burst. And the, the value went up, 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 and then poof. the trouble is nobody knows when the crash is going to happen. But there are characteristics of bubbles, and Bitcoin shows those characteristics. And someone might some might say that it already did crash because it went from around 64,000 down to whatever, 34,000, 32,000. So it did lose half of its value. Here's some characteristics. <laughs> One is uh, there's there's no intrinsic value to it. In other words, you're not. If I'm buying a a share of General Motors, I have, I'm buying a piece of a right. huge corporation that's making real product. Here I'm buying, you know, what I'm buying an electric signal. Um, so that that's one characteristic. There is no intrinsic value to it, except people buying in and propping it up. Number two, when and this is what the guy actually who started Vanguard, you know, investing group in the index fund said, he said, when your barber is telling you about the investment, that's when the bubble is about to burst. I was just speaking to a few 20 something year old guys, um, friends of one of my sons recently, and they're telling me what Bitcoin is going up and up. I can prove it because everyone I know is buying it. I said, that's the <laughs> proof or indication that it's going to crash. Because once they've all bought it, then who else is left to buy it to prop it up? Third thing, the United States dollar is protected by the United States military, the violent ability of the United States military, 
the Treasury's, Treasury Department, the FBI, the CIA, they're all involved in the Secret Service. They're all involved in protecting the American dollar. People are counterfeiting it, and, and they stand a good chance of getting busted because you have the full might and power of the United States backing that dollar. Who's backing Bitcoin? Who's protecting Bitcoin? Uh, now, people will say, oh, there's the blockchain technology. I don't want to go into all the details with the blockchain tech. It's a, it's a certain computer technology. Or a copy of all the transactions are found on every uh, millions of computers and they, nobody can change it, right? Well, in the year 2002, we had protections on things on the internet and technology that nobody could crack. By 2005, you were in big trouble if you only had the 2002 technology. Um, you know, the, the Stuxnet, Stuxnet virus that was able to go onto computers all around the world and find its way into the computers that were controlling the centrifuges in the Iranian nuclear program. Uh, no one was able to stop that. And, and, and whoever was behind it was able to crash Iran's nuclear uh, centrifuges. Who is now investing billions of dollars to protect Bitcoin? The answer is no one. So you're gonna tell me that there's a technology protecting it and you, who doesn't know anything about computer coding, you who doesn't know anything about blockchain technology, you're going to be able to tell me authoritatively that no one can break into this? It's only a matter of time, you would think. And I'm going to tell you, talk about concentration risk, if we wake up one morning and the headline reads, uh, you know, Bitcoin hat, the value will go from 30,000, 50,000 to zero or two cents faster than you can say, trade my Bitcoin, sell my Bitcoin. It will crash, you'll lose all of your value. Now, one of these 20 year olds says to me, oh, but there's a real need for something like that because you know, because uh, people want to be able to do transactions on the government, see it, you know, excuse me. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean people are going to keep buying Bitcoin just to run it up as an investment. And it doesn't mean that Bitcoin is going to survive the technological challenges. Let me tell you another challenge, by the way. Yeah. Um, do you know that how many transactions can be done per second? Bitcoin is limited right now to seven transactions per second. PayPal is at 15 transactions per second. And Visa is at 2,000 transactions per second. Bitcoin is not poised to be able to grow in the number of transactions that it, that it can it, that it can cause to occur, and if you want digital currency, um, except for the tracking part, there are governments coming with it now. China's going full steam ahead with digital currency, and European countries in America are pushing forward in the development of digital currency. So they're going to be they're going to be digital currencies. Which um, the trouble is with them is, well, they're really they're really going to be in a sense not that much different than a credit card. For Bitcoin, in order to increase the transaction number that can be done, there are uh, groups that are adding on sort of services to Bitcoin to be able to do many, many more transactions. And they take a small fee for that. So that's just a checking account. <laughs> that's what, that's, you know, if, if, they, if, they, if the bank charges you a little for each check you write, it's just me a checking account again, and it'll be able to be traced. So now there was also the case recently where a, a, a energy company was was hacked and held for by ransomware. I mean, in other words, people from Russia hacked into the, the system of this pipeline that was supplying natural gas and 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 oil gasoline to the northeast north eastern part of the United States. And then this group said, "Pay us these X millions of dollars in Bitcoin, otherwise, you know, you're going to lose all your data and your company's going to be shut down." And they paid the millions of dollars. It was like 3.4 million, something like that. And then it was later said that the FBI recovered like $2 million of the money. Well, it turns out the FBI didn't actually crack the Bitcoin code, but that there are these and these like companies that are doing transactions with Bitcoin for you called exchanges. And that's where the FBI was, was able to go in. And these, these guys left it in a public exchange, their Bitcoin, the FBI was able to recover it. Um, but it, the government is on the case the capability and the expenditures by governments in um, in technology, in defense, 
and and for, again something like a bitcoin where they can you know terrorism can terrorists can use this in order to fund their activities uh, there's just a danger there's such a danger to it so i'm not going to tell you to buy bitcoin or not bitcoin personally i never bought it i wouldn't touch it um make say well you missed out on all that you know went from whatever it was five cents a coin to sixty five thousand dollars a coin well I could have said about Coca-Cola. I could have said about Apple. You, know, you, you don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you is there's massive risk involved if you're in, risk in Bitcoin. And that risk is eons, eons beyond investing in an index fund where you're actually buying parts of real functioning producing companies. Dr. Roberts, we actually have only four minutes left to the show. Um, two quick questions. One is, is there any type of cryptocurrency that you see on the horizon that may be a viable option? And, of course, then the, uh, the final question is going to be just to share a quick takeaway with the listeners of Mind Your Business. In terms of cryptocurrency, so again, uh, there are the major, company, major countries are developing their own cryptocurrencies, but that's, you wouldn't think that that would fluctuate any differently than their paper currency. And, and that will be backed up by those company by those countries. In terms of individual cryptocurrencies, I'm not in the game, and I'm not an expert in it. I'm only telling you about the um, the risk that I see in cryptocurrencies, and and also the way that it. I mean, in terms of the lack of security, lack of long term security, lack of long term protection of those currencies, and also you know the, the risk that it looks like it looks like a bubble. So you just don't you just end up losing uh, losing everything. Well, we now at the time flies. Uh, my guest is Dr. Richard Roberts, medical doctor, doctor of biophysics, and former pharmaceutical for, former pharmaceutical industry CEO of URL Pharma for nearly a quarter century. Um, he was gracious enough to share of his time and talk all about the world of investing, and he did give uh, some guidance and advice. However, as made very very clear during the show a number of times, he's not taking any type of of responsibility. No responsibility whatsoever. He made it clear, be in touch with your financial advisor. With that said, Dr. Roberts, what final tip, in as it relates to investing, can you share with the listeners of Mind Your Business? About 40 years ago, um, 30 years ago, 34 or 40 years ago, there was an investment advisor who had spoken to a couple who were smokers. And they had smoked uh, two or three packs a day every day for the last 30 years before that. And he said, if they would have, instead of smoking, put those dollars each day that they spent on cigarettes into buying cigarette company stocks, they would have a million dollars at that point. If you want to win in investing, uh, you have to drown out the noise, drown out, just don't listen to those people or showing off. You remember, remember what I told you about the gambler's mentality and you need to invest in index funds over the long term uh, and trust in long term um, security and success of the United States, or if you want to do it in another country, that's your choice, your risk. Um, but definitely diversify and don't put any money in that you can't leave in there in case of a rainy day. And uh, everyone who's anyone in, 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 as in, with expertise in investing would tell you 10, 20, 30 years down the line, you're going to be way, way up. So I wish you all much success. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.